Bangladesh have beaten New Zealand in New Zealand. It's their first ever test win over New Zealand. Their first away win over a side ranked in the top five of the ICC test team rankings. They did so without two of their greatest ever players, Tammy McBall and Shakib al Hassan. And with a seam attack, who had bowling averages of 81, 53 and 99 going into this test match. They're the first touring side to even win a test in New Zealand since March 2017. Bangladesh managed what India, England, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and West Indies have all failed to do in that time. Um, ben, I don't think it's hyperbolic to call this one of the best, one of the greatest test upsets of all time. A young Bangladesh side with a poor away record toppling the world test champions at home. Yeah, I mean, it takes all the boxes to be right up there as maybe the greatest because, I mean, New Zealand have been so good at home. It's not just that this is like a lower ranked side going away from home and beating a higher ranked side, which even that is quite uncommon. It's a team, they're, they're ninth in the world, but then they're, they're ninth for a reason. You know? like this, is a, this is a Bangladesh side in sort of a, a little bit of transition that's trying to work out how to, to, to win games away from home when at home they've sort of get, got a bit of a formula that's not been like hugely consistent, but they can trouble some visiting sides with their spinners. But even then, you know, they were, uh, they struggled against West Indies over this year, which, or at the beginning of last year, which uh, is, is the kind of thing they'd normally win. So, so this, this is not, this is not even a, it's not, it's not as if Bangladesh's progression has been smoothly upwards. Uh, so yeah, it's an, and, and it's been built on their pace bowlers. As you say, I think Ebed Hossein, who was the hero of the game, uh, he came into the, the game. He's like, he had, I didn't realise there was a guy that with an average worse than him. That is uh, quite impressive. But he had 11 wickets, I think, at 81.5, which was the worst average of any bowler with more than 10 test wickets, and then takes six for, uh, six for 46 to, to bowl New Zealand out in the third innings. It's just ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, I, I have to say, I haven't gone through every single test match, uh, but... I wouldn't be surprised if this were to rank as the greatest test upset of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's run through the game quickly because as you say, beating New Zealand in New Zealand is really difficult. And I think if you run through the game, you, you kind of see why uh, on the first day, New Zealand got to 258 for five. Devin Conway scored his second test hundred. But then they collapsed to 328 all out on the second morning. Bangladesh then batted for a whopping 176.2 overs to pile on 400. 58. There were no centuries, but great half centuries from Mamdul Hassan Joy, Najmul Hossein Shanto, Momonal Hack, and Litton Das. But even with that first innings lead, you felt that the draw was the more, most likely result. And it and so it did when the Black Caps were 136 for two in the, in the third innings. But then that spell for the ages from Ebadot Hussein, who on the fourth evening and fifth morning, along with Taskin, ripped the heart out of the New Zealand innings to bowl them out for 169, leaving the Tigers needing to win 40, and the rest is history. Um, it New Zealand are just very, very good at at least not losing those kind of tests. And it took um, something incredible from Everdot. Um, and Ben, you mentioned his record before this test, but it's an amazing story as well. Yeah, I'd just say as well on the sort of the, how the game panned out, Bangladesh basically did exactly to New Zealand what New Zealand do to uh, touring teams. Like they kind of almost lull them into a false sense of security in the game, I think, where the game is kind of quite sleepy quite slow and because so few games go the, the distance these days you kind of forget how long five days is so teams think like yeah we're doing all right we've got 350 yeah we're not letting them score too quickly we're doing all right and then actually gets quite deep into day five but they end up losing the game it's like oh how, how did that happen like it happened to kind of to England uh, in uh, at the end of 2019 and then New Zealand are very good at then not doing that when in the, in the second game that because uh, like, we were talking about this in the podcast uh the other, the other day when I was saying that I thought New Zealand would draw it quite easily because it just felt like what New Zealand do, they either win games in that manner or they play the same thing. And if they don't get opportunities and they don't do it when the, you have to snatch opportunities. And also they, they feel it's so brilliantly Bangladesh as well. Like that's the other thing is like, obviously brilliant catches that come from a team playing well and filled with confidence and sensing that history is there to be made. But also there is a bit of luck to that, uh, that ridiculous catch that was taken uh, by... Uh, who took that one? Uh, Shorefall, the Shorefall, Shorefall, Shorefall Islam, yeah. yeah. And, and Taj Islam took a brilliant catch well to, to end the innings. Uh, but yeah, so, so the, um, uh, the Hussein, the Ebedot Hussein story. So, so he went, uh, started his, I guess, his adult life in the Air Force and the Army as a soldier uh, and was, was a volleyball player in the Air Force, apparently. Uh, only properly turned his hand to cricket about six years ago, I think, when he entered a pace bowling competition. And they kind of realised, OK, here's a guy with some raw materials to get a certain amount of speed going. 
um, but was clearly raw, as you could see from his numbers going to this game. Uh, but they kind of basically moulded him in the test environment rather than letting him develop in, uh, in domestic cricket, which I think is right, because to me that's where you have the coach. And Otis Gibson is a coup bang legend. He's a brilliant fast bowling coach. And he could, I mean, th th there are very good raw materials there. I mean, Taskan Ahmed is a, he, he, there's a bowler with a lot to like there. Um, and if he can sort of carve two even halfway decent test seamers, and that is actually going to be a, a team that can that can trouble trouble the best. So yeah, it's a great a great story for him. He gave it, he gave a great interview as well, which uh, BT Sport put out um, after the game. Just uh, yeah, uh, just 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 summing up the emotions in a in a really lovely way. And also the, the Bangladesh team put out a, um, a celebration video. Did you did you see by the way that uh, Cricket Australia uh, or Cricket.com.au tweeted out the video of Bangladesh celebrating, which quite a lot of people were pointing out was quite funny because when Bangladesh beat Australia last year and cricket.com.au put out the video of Bangladesh celebrating, Justin Langer uh, had a fit basically, just was yelling at the, the media guy, even though it's supposed to be an, an, an independent media outlet, but it's uh, sort of uh, blurred the lines there and uh, they were happy enough to put this out when it's New Zealand getting beaten, I suppose. We'll see what Justin Langer thinks about that, but yeah. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of viewers will remember the, the low scoring series against India two years ago in New Zealand. And while you might, you might get a wicket like that next week in the second test, three of the last four series in New Zealand, the England won in 2019, West Indies and Pakistan last winter, have been flat wickets where it's been generally pretty good for batting. And Bangladesh basically um, did what New Zealand normally do to their opponents. And what I thought was particularly interesting from Bangladesh's point of view is that they, they, they had this game plan and they, and they stuck so closely to it with the bat. They batted slow, batted long. They didn't get impatient at all against that amazing New Zealand attack of Wagner, Bolt, Salvi and Jameson. And then with the ball, and I guess this is the, the influence of Otis Gibson, partly what you're talking about. Um, I thought they outthought New Zealand. They, on a pitch with increasingly variable bats, they just targeted the stumps time and time again. And, you know, the high, you know, that spell from Everdot was brilliant. It wasn't just the figures. It was the way in which he got those wickets, bowling out of the stumps, clean bowling, good test batters. Um, and on, on Bangladesh, again, they've had false dawns before, but you feel like they've never been closer than, than becoming a serious presence in test cricket, at least. Um, they won the Under-19 World Cup in 2020. Two of those players contributed in this test, Mumble, Joy and Shorifal, who took three wickets in the first innings and that incredible catch of mid-wicket that you mentioned on the fifth morning. And with, with that coaching team of Russell, Domingo and Otis Gibson, more young talent coming through. There are a lot of guys from the 19 winning squad who um, are knocking on the door. We've got two spinners in Mehdi and Tigel who they can bank on for years. They should become an increasingly competitive side now where, and, you know, they've got an you know, enormous population who loves their cricket. I remember when I was at the Under-19 World Cup in 2020, when they got to the final and they beat India. The ground in Potter Street, which is a pretty small town, an hour and a half drive away from Johannesburg, um, not, not a big town by any means. Bangladesh uh, support descended on Potter Street and the ground was full. 95% of the supporters there were, were Bangladeshi. Um, the scenes at the end when they won the game was incredible. You know, they've got an immense love of cricket that not all test nations have. And if, um, you know, they've got the talent pool to become a, a force in test cricket, you feel that they... They should they should get there in the next ten years or so. Yeah, possibly. It's, it was interesting to say about New Zealand wickets because they can always be deceptively flat. I think like they sometimes look really green. There was that one for the West Indies uh, Test last year that looked like an absolute uh, like minefield, and actually Kane Williamson comes out and I mean obviously it's Kane Williamson. You can do it on lots of surfaces, but strokes two fifty and makes it look like uh, like the flattest pitch in the world. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I'm not I'm not yet sort of saying this is the start of a golden dawn for Bangladesh Test Cricket quite, just because, like, it, it, it just is slightly freakish and that while those young batters are exciting, I think the fact that Tammy McBowell and Shakiba Hassan aren't there and that they've done it without them is obviously impressive and makes it, you know, in some ways more encouraging, but also, like, th that those two might well be starting a transition out of the longest format Tammy McBowell has sort of playing less and less, has struggled a bit with injuries, but says that his form's not really there and maybe the confidence is, is low. It's, it's just so it's a bit strange going with him. And Shakiba has been pretty open, saying that it's impossible to play all three formats and that it might well be Test cricket that's the one to go. And if you do lose those two at the same time, like that, those just are two. Bangladesh is probably two best ever batters, along with 
Mishvika and to expect these young guys as talented as they are to come in and replicate that level of consistency at the, at the same time is uh, a struggle. But, and again, and again, the bowlers, the, the, the quicks might well have them, like, that, that it's possible that they become a, a brilliant test attack or a, a decent test attack at least, uh, especially with Otis Gibson there. And obviously it seems more plausible now than it did a week ago. But again, like, it is based on, on one game and a slightly freakish game, especially because like, they were getting it. So they targeted the stumps loads. You're right, the cricket stats saying almost a quarter of the ball, I think. Well, either hitting or clipping the stumps, which is basically unheard of. I mean, England sometimes go whole days of test match cricket without doing that. Uh, but there was a, quite a lot of reverse swing as well, which is, I guess, unusual. And that was really helping them and maybe influenced that game plan as well. So, I mean, there, there, there's loads to be excited about, uh, but... I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying Bangladesh World Test Championship winners uh, 2023 quite yet, I think. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not saying that either. But I think I'm slightly more optimistic than you. I think uh, even though he was the least eye-catching this test, Shorofal was only playing a second test match. He was key in their under-19 win a couple of years ago. I really like him as a um I think a lot of people have compared him to Mustafa because he's a left-arm seamer. I think he, remind, he reminds me a little bit more of Chaminda Vass, uh, left arm Zima, who's not rapid, but puts it on the spot. Um, and, and also, and I get, get your point about Tamim and Shakib, but they might be more energised to continue playing test cricket if they see that the side's having a bit more success. It's not as if Bangladesh play loads of test cricket. Um, and also you're seeing players who've been around for a while step up, not just Everdot and Taskin, but also Litton Das for the last couple of years, you were saying on the podcast recently, he's really emerged as a, as a really solid test cricketer. And we've not really talked about Momo Hack. Momo Hack averages over 14 test cricket. Um, and he, you know, he, he's got a really solid technique that you, you'd back at this stage of his career to do reasonably well overseas. And, and, you know, I guess it's all relative. I'm not saying Bangladesh are going to suddenly be challenging for World Test Championships in the next few years. But Dave, look, their, their recent record is poor. Their record in test cricket... Uh, since they, they entered the format 20 odd years ago is poor, but I think they, they are better place than ever to challenge away from home. I mean, away from home, their record is awful um, up until now. They've only beaten sides in Asia uh, or Zimbabwe or um, a West Indies side in 2009 that was effectively a B team. They just, they basically don't win outside of Asia. So the fact they've done it at all, let alone against one of the best sides in the world, I think is incredibly encouraging. Um, let's just finish on New Zealand. They're going to be absolutely gutted with that defeat. Um, and as, as amazing the story is for Bangladesh, um, New Zealand have had themselves to blame in many ways. The tail end collapses in both innings will, will haunt them. Um, and Brendan McCullum on commentary mentioned repeatedly that they don't have BJ Watling anymore. BJ Watling is a player who kind of rose in occasions when the side was struggling a little bit. And with Kane Williamson injured, they needed some of the others to step up and Conway did that and Will Young did that. Two relative newbies at test level. They did that with the bat. But um, Ben, you did some number crunchy and you worked out that this is pretty big for their chances of defending the World Test Championship. Yeah, and I guess just from a batting point of view, like it, this, this you'd expect Tom Latham to, to step up and, he, and he, he's been in slightly iffy form for a little while, not horrendous form. And again, Ross Taylor, well, obviously he's literally coming to the end, but that's been kind of on the cards for a while. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're a seed. I mean, obviously having came in and out is going to make any team weaker. But yeah, from, from World Test Championship point of view, um, it's obviously hard to know. I mean, there's so many games that we played. It's hard to know exactly what that cost was going to be to be in that top two. But last time round, it was uh, 70 uh, points, one per points contested, which I'll call PCT from now on. Um, and New Zealand basically have no margin for error if they want to clear that. Um, they can lose one game from their next, what is it? Uh, they've played three out of 13, so one game from the next 10. Yeah. Um, and they've got some pretty tough fixtures. So South Africa will tour New Zealand, which will be a really good series. New Zealand have never beaten South Africa in a test series. Uh, and then they go to England and Pakistan and Sri Lanka also visit. And so while it's possible they might win all those series to win them all and basically clean sweep them all. So even if they draw two and don't lose any and win the rest, they'll still end up with about, I think it's like 60, uh, 69.2 PCT, which is what Australia got last time to be knocked out. I, wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if that margin was slightly lower this time because Australia and Zealand, who were second and third last time round, both had overseas tours cancelled. Admittedly, New Zealand's tour cancelled was to Bangladesh and Australia had tours cancelled to Bangladesh and South Africa and they might have 
done all right there. But still, that is uh, going to make things a little bit easier if you're just playing the home series. And, and, but, but then what New Zealand's World Test Championship run was based on last minute, they only won one out of five tests away from home last time and won all of them at home, and that was enough to get into the final. Uh, and they can't now win all their tests at home. So they're going to need to uh, not, not improve away because they've been a decent team away from home, but they're going to need to go and do something pretty special if they are to get there. Uh, and, and then even, you know, I mean, it's not even guaranteed they're going to win this next test against Bangladesh. And I think we haven't mentioned Listen Dart, I think, who top scored in that first innings. And actually, I guess the one thing is, even without Shakib and Tammy McBell, there is a core, as you, as you mentioned, Mominal, but Listen is averaging 50 or just about 50 since the start of uh, last year or the year before. Um, which, and he was a player who for a long time was, I guess, would have been contributing in this sort of way that some of the youngs have in this game, where he would play the odd good innings here and there, but he was also been, would often play some pretty frustrating shots to get himself out. Uh, looked like a proper class batter, but just the numbers weren't there for so long, and now they are there. And so if he can keep that up and then Mominal becomes the player that it seemed like he could be, and then that actually does allow the young batters to bed in. And then the, the other thing is, if, if that if that pace stack does become decent, that that is, even if they don't become a properly consistent team, that's what allows you to actually win games away from home rather than just put up a good showing in them. Like, do, do you remember that game? When would it have been? Maybe in 2017. But I can't remember, in, in New Zealand, when they made, like, basically 600 and still managed to lose. Uh, that's that's the kind of thing that a decent pace tack, you, 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 you will, you, you shouldn't do that basically. So, yeah. And, and also you know, we, we've got our England hats on as well. You know, England have struggled to find spinners that they can trust. And Mehedi, I thought uh, kind of low key put in a really good performance when the, he allowed, he allowed, he allows the seamers around him. They were, first of all, he allows them to play a four man seamer, a uh, four man bowling attack rather than five. Um, and he's, got enough control that you know even if this the pitch isn't doing too much for spinners that he can go for not many and over um, and and kind of allow the seamers to rotate around him and also he's very handy with the bat as well um but yeah what you said about new zealand in the world test championship is is quite interesting um i guess at the moment you've got the india south africa series going on and new zealand will be desperately hoping for south africa to take as many points away from india in this series as possible um, I reckon. I reckon we'll call it a day there, Ben. Just actually, there is one more thing, if it's all right. That I, I wonder if just for New Zealand going forward, whether this will cause them to rethink how they go about Test cricket at home, because they have been so uh, reliant on basically just their quicks at home, and that often the the, the, the five quicks. I mean, so they they missed an all rounder in this Test, um, or a seam bowling rounder. Obviously, they had Vindra, but they missed like a Colin de Grandom or a Daryl Mitchell, which I think actually can make quite a big difference. It's just something different. Uh, like a, a, even someone a bit slower sometimes can make a bit of a difference um, but obviously they left Ajaz Patel out of the squad altogether and actually it's I mean there is quite a bit of hindsight there I don't think anyone was saying it was an awful decision at the time but you felt like when uh, I mean as, as much for bowler preservation as anything else it felt like they were missing a, a high class test spinner as uh, Bangladesh were batting forever and I wonder if they will now think okay maybe we actually do need a a second plan because our seamers can't do it every time and if they can't we are going to need someone who offers something different and that might well be Aegis Patel so this could end up being quite a good thing for him I suppose. Or, or they prepare more pitches like what I imagine we'll see in the second test. Um, well either way we'll, we'll talk about that we'll talk about the India Safka series and we'll talk about the ongoing uh, SCG Ashes test on the next full episode of the Wisdom Cricket Weekly Podcast. If you like what you've seen today don't forget to hit the subscribe button.